Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's been a beautiful Sunday so far. We're looking forward to a great evening this evening. Thought we'd start off this evening with number 361 from the Red Book. This world is not my home. Number 361. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh no, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't Just up in glory, man will live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. They strong the sweetest praise with that from heaven show. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, no, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't keep at home in this world anymore. Steve, will you lead our opening prayer? turn over to number 313. This was the one I wasn't sure if everybody here knows or not. One of the ones I grew up with again. So we'll find out. We all know this song? No? No? Maybe? Maybe? Look. You know it, right? Now. Okay. We saw thee not when thou didst come to this poor world of sin and death, nor yet beheld thy old age home in Baptist bonds in Nazareth. But we believe their footsteps trod the streets and plains. The Son of God, but we believe thy footsteps trod its streets and plains, the Son of God. We saw thee not when lifted high amid the wild and savage crew, nor heard we that imploring cry. Forgive they know not what they do, but we believe that deed was done that shook the earth 
then prayed the sun. But we believe the deed was done that shook the earth and failed the sun. We gaze not in the open tomb where once thy mangled body lay, nor saw the Just you, Lola? Oh, okay. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and then Andrew will bring that over to you. Or we'll do it the other way around. <laughs> Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your son. We thank you that he did come down and die for us, and we do believe. We believe in him. We believe in you. We thank you that he was the last sacrifice we needed to have. Pray that you'll be with Lola as she takes this fruit of the vine, this cup. Help bless her and bless her love. Guide us all always, we pray in Jesus' name. Let's turn over and to remember the Lord's Supper to 286. Olive's brow. 
let's turn over to 403. I think I got time to put in one more song. No Tears in Heaven. No tears in heaven, no sorrow given, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, when we shall join that happy band. No tears in heaven, then. no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears in heaven, fair. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Glory is waiting, waiting up yonder, where we shall spend an endless day. Savior will be forever where no more sorrows can dismay. No tears in heaven, fed, no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears in heaven, fed, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Some morning yonder we will cease to ponder, but no. Some morning yonder we'll cease to ponder o'er things this life has brought to view. All will be clearer, save ones be bigger. In heaven where all will be made new. No tears in heaven, fed. No tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flowed. No tears in heaven, fed. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be Tears of joy. You know, I've often wondered about that. It says no tears in heaven at all, but what about tears of joy? You know, maybe there will be a few tears, but it'll be all the good ones. And speaking of tears of joy, do we have any praises for tonight? Yes. Yeah, my brother made it safely home, but he told me he almost got hit by a truck. It was full of farm workers. He said all he could do was grip the steering wheel and slam on the brake. Great praise. God saves lives on a daily basis. We know miracles are done. Yes? On Friday, we ended up making a double trip to Florence, and the Lord saved us from being in an accident. So, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. And I was not the hero of this story. <laughs> no, no. God's the only one that needs the glory. We all know that. <laughs> Any other praises? Yes, hi. talk about God's alive and living every day. He works in our lives constantly. Well, we got a few praises on our list down here. Franklin doing a lot better. Louise, no more shots in the, uh, needed in the eyes. And I need shots in my eyes because I can't read. And Pam got to see Bessie. All these great phrases. I love the fact you surprised her in there. That was nice. That was nice. Uh, Unfortunately, Louie has passed on. We, if we pray for him, sometimes God answers. It's not always the answer we want, but we keep praying. We pray for his family and their grief. Uh, Marty, how's Marty feeling? He's feeling a lot better. Okay. Okay. We'll definitely keep 
Impressburg. And Vincent, nice to see you back there, Vinny. How you doing? Good, glad to hear it. How's everything going in Vinny's world? Yeah, that's, that's what we like to hear. And Sherry, good to see you. We're still praying for you. Aislinn, uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about that. Medical testing and need some prayers for that. I know Carrie mentioned it this morning, and unfortunately it's a short-term memory here. I'm not sure exactly what she said, but we'll keep praying for the medical tests on Aislinn. Um, Amaral. Stomach ulcers, okay, okay. Both twins? Twins? Both twins. Both twins, okay. I don't know these people as well as y'all do. Okay, they're both twins, and we'll pray for both of them then. Okay, um, Marty, Vincent, Sherry, Aislinn, Megan, there's where I'm down to. Okay, boy, my eyes are not good tonight. <laughs> How's things going with Megan? Daycare. Um, well, she hasn't had one yet. No. Okay. So she's uh, she's good. She's working. She looks good. We keep praying for her. We keep praying for her. Uh, Skip Henry. We got to keep praying for him. Only has a few months to live. Uh, Barbara was mentioning to me that her daughter Debbie, a friend of hers by the name of Ed, got coronavirus and he's not got long to live. So. Yeah, he's, he's down on a ventilation tube now and not doing too well, so we just need to pay, pray for some comfort. And God's well, will to they, be done. They come out of it. Yeah, they will. Uh, well, let's uh, pray even stronger for him. Pray even stronger for him. God can do miracles. It doesn't matter if we're dying. God can still save us. God's amazing. God is good. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for Skip Henry. He's only got six months to live. Lois Lo uh, needs prayers. Ken Morgan, Sherry's friends, doing better. But, oh, I thought I was just talking to Sherry. Okay. <laughs> wow, my eyes really are getting bad. Um, Alan Walker, slow recovery. Jack, continue praying for Jack. It's a lot of problems there. We, we need Jack still. Jerry, we keep praying for you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that. Every night. Mac McPherson and his gallbladder problems. Uh, again, I don't know Mac personally, but if there's any updates, if not, we just keep praying for him. He was a member of this congregation. Okay. Okay. Probably during a time I wasn't here. Um, Holly, Mandy's friends, we need prayers for her and for her ba baby. Steve, we need to continue praying for Steve. Amen. And Tom, I see Tom again, but we're going to pray for Tom and his job situation. I, I know he's got a job now, but he would like something that's better suited to his mental stability, so we need to pray for Tom. Lawrence, continue prayers for Lawrence. Walt, Jack's brother, Michael, Stockman's son, and praying for the Stockmans as well, and Janet's husband's friend. We'll continue praying for him as well. Is there any changes? Anything that needs to be added to our prayer list? Yes. Hi, Lauren. Yes, um, Whitey, one of our neighbors came home from work, and he had a Dick, would you lead us in prayer? Father, we just thank you again for the chance that we can be together. Lord, we just pray that you just be with us again for all those mentioned on the list that you will touch their lives, Lord, and do the Lord and heal them and restore them. And uh, just pray the Lord for each one, Lord, each opportunity. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us again, Lord. And uh, we just ask you to be with us again, Lord. Amen. Thank you.
Yes, tonight we have a special treat. Mr. Dave Rutledge is going to come up here and give us the message tonight. Looking forward to it, Dave. silence there. <laughs> 163 in the blue book. so you don't have to use all your time. Uh, did you want a couple more songs? <laughs> What's that mean? Silence. Stretch. Stretch it. Stretch it. <laughs> <laughs> we can scratch it, can't we, Tadami? Don't want Gordon to get out of here early. No. <laughs> Well, it's in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will be talking about the Holy Spirit tonight and what he does for us. In the little bitty book in the back of Titus is where I have my earliest quote tonight. Such a teeny little book. It had so much to say about so many things that are really important to us. Basics. Titus 3, 3. For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hatefulness, hating one another. When the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us not on the basis of the deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. By the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. He saved us not on doing good things that we had already done. He saved us by his mercy. The Holy Spirit whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior that being justified by his grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God may be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. But shun foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. There are three wonderful works performed by the Holy Spirit in preparing sinners to become Christians. First thing the Holy Spirit does is he restrains us from temptations. Where do temptations come from? The devil. The devil preys on us by tempting us to sin, to lust, to covet, to hate, to envy, and on and on and on. Nothing good's come out of that guy. 
The Holy Spirit intervenes and prevents this from happening. Isaiah 59, 19 says this, They will fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun in the east. For he will come like a rushing stream which the wind of the Lord drives. Also from Isaiah 59, 21, My spirit which is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth from now and forever. Jesus, in speaking to the apostles, Sixteenth chapter, actually starting fifteen twenty six. The promise of the Holy Spirit from John. When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will be bearing witness of me. You will bear witness also, because you have been with me from the beginning. So his apostles will bear witness for him. These things I have spoken to you, that you may be kept from stumbling. They will make you outcasts from the synagogue, but an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he is offering service to God. Remember, the apostles were not looked upon as nice people. They killed Jesus. They wanted to kill the apostles. And they took many opportunities to try and do that. And some of them they did do it too. These things they will do because they have not known the Father or me. But these things I have spoken to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them, and these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me, and none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper shall not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, righteousness is because I go to the Father and you no longer behold me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. The ruler of this world is Satan. The Holy Spirit convicts us. Both sin and righteousness are exposed by the Holy Spirit. In John 16, excuse me, I just repeated myself. When the Spirit comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Judgment because the ruler of this world is Satan. Remember back in Acts, the Holy Spirit convicted Felix, the governor, 
Paul was preaching. And his preaching got to the conscience of the governor. He started shaking and trembling in his boots. And he called this hearing, as it was, to an end because he was scared. And what did he do? He put it off, didn't he? He says, you're going to King Agrippa. Let him deal with you. In Acts 26, 28, Paul was talking to Agrippa. And after a pretty long oration, Paul was windy. Agrippa interrupted. He said, in a short time, you will persuade me to be a Christian. And Paul retorted, if only it were so that you and yours could be like me, except, of course, for these chains. The Holy Spirit's work regenerates us. When a repenting sinner is convicted of the error of his ways and accepts Christ as Savior, he's given a new nature by the Holy Spirit. The old ways are replaced by new ways, the ways of Christ. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, if he is a new creature, old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. This is explained to Nicodemus by Jesus in John 3, 1 through 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And you remember why he went by night? Because Nicodemus was a ruler of the Pharisees. He was a big shot. And he didn't want anybody to see him going to visit with Jesus. So he waited until about midnight to go. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. In 1 Corinthians 6.11, Paul tells us uh, a new nature, a changed life, things that dominated the old life are gone, replaced by a new changed you. Before the Holy Spirit came to you, God may have been part of your beliefs. Afterwards, you now love Jesus. You love God's Word, and you want to study it and learn more. You become a sponge, absorbing more and more of God's words. In Psalms 119, and that's a long one. The need to love God's word is expressed 17 times. The new you loves other Christians as well. Even loves his enemies. Matthew 5, 43. 
Instead of hating them, hate no longer exists. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. Hate's one of the words, the first words that we have to flush out of our brain when we become a Christian. Because of the Holy Spirit, you have a newfound love and respect for the apostles and their hard work for Christ. And you want to emulate them. Thus, hate is gone from you. The new you loves the pure life instead of the worldly life. In 1 John, 2.15 Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the the world. The world is passing away and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God abides forever. John personified love. He was called the apostle that loved. And Jesus loved him. And love is very important in a Christian life. So, what's this Holy Spirit all about? Error number one in many, many people's minds, they think that the Holy Spirit is only an influence or a principle or a figment of our imagination. I think that's wrong. Paul thought it was wrong. He's the one that told me. It's wrong, period. The Holy Spirit is as much a person, an individual existence of a conscious being as the Father and the Son, Jesus. Period. He has both a mind and a personality, a will of his own. How do I know? Paul told me. Romans 8, 26. The same way the Spirit also helps our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should especially when we first become a Christian. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings and too deep for words. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. In 1 Corinthians, Paul tells us some things we need to know about the Spirit. 12, 4 through 11. The Spirit is busy, busy, busy. There are varieties of gifts, and that's what Paul is talking about here gifts from God and the Holy Spirit. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects,
but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one, that's each one, each Christian, individually, just as the Spirit sees well. So, the, these powers that the gift is given to us by the Spirit are coming from the Spirit. His powers. Uh, uh, there are people that can pick up a guitar and just stick their fingers here and there and pick here and there and they can play it, right? My dad can do that. He just called music chicken scratches. He did it by ear. And he played the mandolin and the banjo. He could play a violin, but he couldn't do this thing. That was a gift. It was a musical gift. And uh, there are many, many, many kinds of gifts. And they're all distributed by the Holy Spirit, who knows all and can do all and is everywhere. Spirit is equally as busy in everyone's life as the Father and the Son. Paul was guided on his travels. He took many, many, many trips. He suffered under many perils and potential perils. But he was guided by the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He often spoke directly to the apostles, like Paul in Acts 16, 16, 10. Starting in verse 6. As they passed through Phrygian and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, when they had come to Mysia, they were trying to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. Passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. While there, a vision appeared to Paul in the night at a dream. A certain man from Macedonia was standing and appealing to him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So he was being guided on his journey by the Holy Spirit. Places he had to stay out of, he stayed out of. In Acts 13, 2, the Holy Spirit spoke to the leaders of the church in Antioch, telling them where to send Paul and Barnabas. 13, 2. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, 
they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. And from there, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they reached Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their helper. They had a backup in John. The apostle that lived the longest. So was that a figment of their imagination? They got orders from the Spirit, from God, from Jesus. Because they're all the same, aren't they? The deity of the Holy Spirit, that's where we're getting to, isn't it? He is a real person. He is also God. Just like God the Father, he too is everywhere at once. Busy, 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 just like God. Let's look at Psalms 139. This is David having a quandary about his life. And we know his life was very complicated, don't we? Lord, you have searched me and known me. You do, does, you do know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. So David had a feel for it, didn't he? The Spirit controlled David's life, as did God. Just as the Son is the eternal, so is the Spirit. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? He, the Spirit, is co-equal with the Father and Son. This is made evident when John baptized Christ. Remember Matthew 3, 16 and 17? After being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. All three together on earth with John the Baptist. Matthew closed his gospel with these words of Jesus to the apostles. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Great Commission to spread the gospel word. God's Holy Spirit was there at the beginning and continues working in us today. And that's not the end, Gordon. 
<laughs> Sounded like it, didn't it? <laughs> the work of the Holy Spirit in Christian living is just as a loving and wise mother tenderly watches over her children. So the Holy Spirit cares for the children of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. The price was the blood of Jesus, the death of Jesus on a cross. Therefore, glorify God in your body. As believers, we are all indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's where God wanted him to be. The indwelling is for the Holy Spirit to control this newly created nature when you're baptized into Christianity and remember you're a new nature everything is new about you and all of the bad things that you did when you weren't a Christian have been forgiven because you repented of them that's why we get baptized so we come up out of the water a new being with the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. The Holy Spirit is to control this newly created nature given us at the moment of conversion. Uh, indwell means exist within like an activating spirit force within us sent by God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul writes, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old thing passed away. Behold, new things have come. Remember in the 70s when the went to the moon? in 69 and then we had spaceships flying back and forth to the moon well somewhere in the late 70s we had Apollo 13 go to the moon they were almost there I think it was Grissom I'm not sure he says Houston we have a problem One of their oxygen bottles blew up and exploded and they didn't have enough oxygen to turn around and come back, they thought. That was a problem. That was a big problem. Well, as a Christian, a new Christian, just the day you're baptized, there is a big problem. The new creature is very vulnerable to the devil. And the devil's upset. He just lost a sinner. And he doesn't take that easily. He hates losing a sinner to God. That's why the Holy Spirit indwells a new Christian. Ephesians 3.16 He, God, would grant you a new creature to be strengthened with power through his Holy Spirit in the inner man. God's plan. The Holy Spirit fills believers. We are to be filled with the Spirit. In Ephesians 5.18, it says, that is to be controlled by the Spirit. This doesn't mean that we get more of the Spirit as we get filled, we don't get more of the Spirit. 
The Spirit gets more of us. So we're replacing a lot of stuff up in this brain of ours with good stuff. And the good stuff kicks out some of the old stuff, making room for more stuff from the Spirit. As a Christian grows in Christ, the Holy Spirit gets more and more and more of us. And we call it growing in maturity. The more that he gets of us, the more mature we get in Christianity. We become less susceptible to Satan's power, to his temptations. It becomes easier and easier to say, get out of here, devil. Isn't that right, Gordon? Yeah. You scared the lady behind us. I'm sorry, Barbara. <laughs> say, you, before you get through, you got to get us back from the moon. How did that happen without their oxygen? Oh, that was the Holy Spirit. There was three Holy Spirits in that capsule. And they figured out how to get back. Makes sense to me. I studied engineering once. Flunked calculus twice. That wasn't in high school, that was in college. 15 credits of F. I decided to be a policeman instead of a scientist. The more we grow in Christ, the Spirit will find us more acceptable, and we are sanctified by Him. We are made holy. A mature Christian produces fruit, good fruit, lots of fruit, due to the Holy Spirit's work. Work fruits like love, peace, joy, patience. Her name is patience. And kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's from Paul to Galatians in 5.22 one of my favorite verses. I've used that in more than one of my sermons. The Holy Spirit imparts spiritual gifts to us. The purpose of these gifts is to glorify God and to edify Christ. That is to improve, improve the body of Christ, his kingdom. The Holy Spirit teaches us that's what Jesus told the apostles. When he comes, he will teach you. He helps us when we study the words of God and when we hear his words preached. He helps us understand the word. To summarize, Gordon, the Holy Spirit directs our journey to salvation by restraining us from temptations, by convicting us of our sinful ways, to make us shake like Felix did when our conscience tells us something's going on up there that shouldn't be going on up there by regenerating us into a new creature with a new nature, nature so that those things don't ever come up anymore. The Holy Spirit is real. He works in all of us. The Spirit convinces us we made a good choice. 
He is omnipresent and eternal, just like God and Jesus. The Holy Spirit indwells believers, controlling our spiritual growth. That's right up to the moment we meet Jesus in heaven. Or if down here in a fishing boat and he comes for us early and he takes us. God will say to the Holy Spirit and us, job well done. And that's my message tonight. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank Jesus for doing the will of God. One sixty-three blue book. Thank you. And I bet you he does know this one. I might know this one. <laughs> Very good. That was a good sermon. with number 163 open my eyes that I may see I'd like to stand and sing our closing song